What's up, everyone? Today I have a fun little hand-to-foot split pattern, and this is a sweaty one. If you are not sweating by the end of practicing this thing, you're not doing it right. I'm like 99% sure that I ripped this off from Ian Barnett, but I've been scouring his Instagram the past couple of days, and I cannot find the thing that I ripped it off from. Either way, check out Ian. The guy's an absolute monster on the drums. I love the way he plays. This pattern is another one that's pretty easy to understand, but it is not easy to play. It's exhausting. This one has humbled me, but it is a lot of fun once you get it down. And I mentioned that it's built from these hand-foot splits, so we're going to play the bass drum, in between every time we hit with our hands. The pattern has six parts to it, and the sticking is both hands together, then kick, right, kick, left, kick. Playing the kick in between every stroke of the hands. And whenever we play both hands, the right hand is always going to be on the ride cymbal, and for the purposes of this video, the left hand will play on either the floor tom or the snare drum. To get this off the ground, I'm going to demonstrate using only the bass drum, floor tom, and ride cymbal. I'm going to go really, really, really slowly, and all together it sounds like this. To give things more flair, I'm going to work in the snare drum. So I'm going to play through two different orchestrations, each of which are two beats of 16th triplets. So the first orchestration on its own sounds like this. And the second orchestration on its own sounds like this. You also want to be able to switch between the two, so try playing maybe four beats of orchestration A and four beats of orchestration B and just flip back and forth a few times.
work this pattern into the context of a drum fill, I'm going to add a little something to the beginning of the phrase, and then I'm going to modify one thing at the end of the phrase, which will make it easier to get back into a groove coming out of the fill. To get into the fill, I'm going to play a beat of 16th triplets on beat four just before going into the fill, and this is going to behave as a sort of on-ramp. It sets us up to play both hands together on beat one, and this little on-ramp is just right, left, right, left, right, kick. Coming out of the fill can get a little funky since the original pattern ends with a kick. So we want to modify that tail end of the phrase to make it easier for the kick and right hand to line up on beat one. In order to do that, we're going to take beat four at the very end of the phrase and we're going to modify the pattern and change it to both hands, kick, right, left, kick, left. Now we end with the left hand, which makes it much easier for the right hand and kick to align on beat one. Altogether, we'll have a combination that is two measures of 16th triplets plus that one extra beat to get into it. And I'll use orchestration A to play through the first measure and orchestration B to play through the second measure. Altogether, it sounds like this. When you go to practice this, start ridiculously slow, like embarrassingly slow. You just want to make sure that everything is spaced nice and evenly, otherwise this thing just turns into a hot sloppy mess and that is not cool. And if you're persistent with practicing very slowly over a very long period of time, eventually the speed will come to you. It takes time though. It takes a lot of time. Be patient. If you like what you saw in this video, check out my Patreon page. Your support grants you access to transcriptions for this video, as well as transcriptions for all my other lesson videos. And follow me on Instagram, at DrumMerhar, to see more videos of my playing. I also teach private lessons both in person and remotely, so if you'd like to study with me one-on-one, -on -one, send me a message and I'd be happy to set something up. As always, thanks for watching and see you next time.